Okay, today we are going to talk about processing sheep's wool. Today we're going to talk about processing sheep's wool. I have some South Down Baby Doll Sheep fiber, and I have been using it for the last year on um, dryer balls. I have been felting little animals, and I have been... Um, making a blanket like this for soap. So I will show you the process of how I do that in just a few moments. So um, I'll, I've got everything together, so let me show you. First we have the raw wool. Now this looks like a mess but it has been washed several times. And believe me, it, these darker spots right here was filled with sand, mostly. And they almost look felted themselves. But when it's like this, I comb it out and I make these little blankets, like I said. And this is what I put the, the uh, soap on. Um, I will... I will put the soap in the center here and I'll fold it over on both sides. And I'll, in just a second, I'll show you how I seal that. But I'm going to make, this will be wet felted soaps. So we just take a normal soap bar. This one happens to be mixed berry. And these blue ones here are ocean I believe they smell like the ocean. It's pretty mild. Uh, you may have soaps that are handmade. I just don't have time to do them right now, but I have made soaps myself and put homemade soaps in there. I also do special orders. So if someone has homemade soap and they would like me to put these little blankets over them, they're used in the shower, in the bath as scrubs. You can and you don't have to add any extra soap to them. They already have the soap in them. And I'll show you what they're gonna look like when we'll, we'll get to that point and I'll actually um, do some felting for you so you can see. But my first process is this. And when I get this washed and cleaned, you can see on the back side, it's a little bit more yellow. Well, this is where the lanolin was in. The, the, it is not there now, but it's stained. But if it was there, it would be real gooey and almost waxy. But lanolin is what is used in cosmetics, makeup. Um, but when I boiled it, I was trying to boil it out because I wasn't going to use the lanolin. I wanted it out of my fiber so that I could felt with it. This is the sheep's wool, of course. And I'll show you an example of the dryer balls that I do. Um, so I don't even have to comb it into these little blankets if I'm going to do a dryer ball. And what I do with those is I just roll them up and I start, I have a, I have a special needle, felting needle, and I just start felting it into a ball. When I get my little core ball done it'll be it'll be small when i get it finished then i will wrap one of these little blankets around it and that's what i've done with these this one i needle felted it tight but i will go and put it in the hot water and and actually wet felt it also but when it's finished you will throw two or three of these in your dryer they could last years i mean four or five years. But three of them is perfect for a dryer because it will help your clothes dry quicker, make them fluffier. And you can, I use, these are natural so that you can add your own uh, essential oils if you like lavender or just whatever you like, or if you just like no scent at all. Some, some are maybe be allergic to fragrances but you can see the difference in the size here. 
this is the part that I have not felted yet. And you can see here where I ended. And I did that on purpose so you could tell specifically. So this is the softness after, after I put the blanket on and sealed all the edges up with my needle. I started doing a light needle felting. And this is what you would end up with if I continued to make it tight. So those are the dryer balls. Uh, and with these soaps, when I get them, here's an example of one that I've that I've put the blanket on already. So the soap is in there, and it's you can see it's real loose, it's real squishy at the ends, but I sealed up the ends with my needle, both ends. So when I put these in hot and cold water and add a lot of friction to them, I am wet felting. And they, once I get it to the point where it's tight enough, then I take some, so I think it's, uh, it's another type of sheep, merino. I take some merino that I actually purchased online and I marble it. So it gives it a little bit of uh, decoration. So I marbled them, and uh, this is one that I did a little bit of felting. This is one that I did no felting at all. This is the blanket, so you can see the difference. So I, I felted that one a little tighter with the needle, which I don't really have to. I just did as an example. But this one is really loose, and it's got plenty. But when I get done with it, it'll be tight around that piece of soap. And here's the seam you can see right here. I close the seam up and I do that with this special needle here. And believe me, if you poke yourself with this needle, you will know it. We have little finger guards that I use, especially if I'm doing something really small. And you just, this is how you felt it. You do many, many, many jabs with this little needle. And you can't really tell. I don't think it'll get, maybe, uh, this needle is a special needle. It has these little barbs on there, and you can barely see them. I can barely see them, and I know what I'm looking for. But it's just look like little cuts. This is a special felting needle. Sometimes I use two. I don't use this little holder. Sometimes I actually just use two of the same size needle. There you can kind of see the barbs on that one, on those. But these are sharp, and if you poke yourself, you will know it. <laughs> they, they, they have a, a little, you'll get a little owie for sure. So that is needle felting. I also use alpaca, and my alpaca is right here some of the alpaca and this has been washed but it has not been blended these little blankets here are blended and this is just the locks it's been washed it's very fine it makes beautiful yarn now i have blended some here you can see how fluffy the pieces are it's it's very soft and I use these for little animals that I do. And you just roll them up like this. And I roll it as tight as I can. And then I start uh, poking it with that little needle. And before you know it, you will have a shape. And I'll show you uh, this little shape here is actually just a little block. And that is... That is this really soft, fluffy alpaca. And I just, I use this little block when I'm felting little tiny mice and little animals. I lay the little animal on this and it doesn't go through and poke me. So that is another form of felting. I'll drop my needles. So this is just my little felting kit that I use, um, but these, these, um, this is, this is raw, this is the raw alpaca after it's been washed, and my alpacas, you can see they're, they're pretty long, the locks, they have these little dreadlocks, 
and this has just been washed and all of the hay and just vegetable matter has been picked out of it but i'll use this for for uh for making my little animals and i can also if i blend it onto my blending board i made this blending board it has little tiny teeth you can see they're not they're not sharp like like the other but i blend that's how i get these and i can show you that in a minute that's how i get these little these little blankets um for my soaps is i blend them on here they start out like this isn't that amazing and they end up that soft fluffy fiber and it looks yellow but it's really the sheep is white but because of the lanolin it did stain so that it looks yellow off white but it actually comes from a white sheep so let me get set up and i'll show you how i do the blending it really is kind of fascinating how when using this little board i didn't have the funds to buy a new one they were quite expensive so i ended up buying this pad and my husband made this for me he just put some felt underneath it and and uh we stapled that on the board we fixed it so it would sit across my little box here without sliding around and this little box is really handy because once i make my little blanket this is some of the sand that comes out of the fiber even after i've washed it so and i've washed it maybe four or five times but this is the sand that's that's in the um just little fibers this is what's what's in this it doesn't look like it but there, if there's any trapped in there it pretty much cleans it up so that we end up with something like this so let me get set up and i'll show you how i work this blending board it's kind of interesting and maybe one day i'll be able to get a spinning wheel that's one of my dreams is getting a spinning wheel so that i can make yarn because i really love to crochet with the alpaca so hang on just a second okay. so i'm clearing my little my little work spot here these are all the dryer balls that are ready to wet felt i've got them the shape i want them and it'll go really fast and once i wet felt them then i'll throw them in the dryer and it'll shrink them even tighter so it'll be like a really hard tennis ball so um, i'll work on that let me clear my space here and i'll show you how i how i work this um blending board like i say it's it's i might bring this down a little bit make it a little bit easier for you to see let me get a and see it's hard to believe that that this little scrap is going to turn out like that blanket now i have done a lot of them see i have this is full of little blankets now i do have this is the very last piece all of these are little blankets for for my soaps and um we'll get we'll get that in another video because it'll take a little bit longer and i'll have to i'll have to stretch it out let me show you what this looks like can you see the the darker short um it looks like felted that is what is near their skin this part and this part is how long their little fiber is. See, it's not very long at all compared to the alpaca. Let me get one of these. It's hard to work with one hand. Um, See, the alpaca is much longer. 
some sometimes it's four or five inches long but when i blend this all these little tiny short pieces are blended together to make a more stable piece to work with and then you saw what i did with the soaps otherwise i would not be able to wrap this around the soaps uh, This is how I blend. I usually just take a small piece. Doesn't matter if it's if it comes apart. And I start on this end and I'm going to work to about right here. I have a little eyeball where I know that I need it at least that wide for my soaps. So I just start stretching and yeah, this is this is tough on the fingers and I'll show you this is what I use to help and what I end up doing is I just poke that down in where the needles are at because I want it to come up to the top of those needles before it is thick enough for me to use because I don't want any holes in my little blanket for the soap because I don't want the soap showing at all so this this is, sometimes it's easier for me to do it with my fingers and then I take this and poke it down in there. But, so this is blending. And I imagine in the old days, you know, they, they did have spinning wheels. They made their own blenders, sometimes with long nails um, or spikes. So there was there was um, tools that they developed themselves in order to use to blend. So what I'm basically doing is just taking these really small. There's a little piece of hay. They're little small pieces and stretching them out. And the next one, see it, it stretches a long ways. And the next one. I will start in a different spot and stretch it over it so it makes it stronger. If I was making roving for yarn, I would, when I got this whole thing completely filled up, then I ha would have this little doodad. <laughs> I call it a doodad. And I would start here and start running it through that little doodad and it would actually make yarn. See how it's how it stays together. It would actually make yarn. And I could use colored because I do dye some of it. But these are going to be natural, but I've dyed greens and yellows and pinks and blues and purples. So, and I've, I've tried using natural, uh, like tea bags, make brown and uh, purple onions. And um, there's just, you can use uh, grasses. I mean, you can just use all kinds of natural things to make dyes. That's what they did in the old days. They didn't go to the store and pick up, you know, a dye like we can pick up those commercial Ritz dyes or something, but I, I, like, I kind of like the natural organic dyes, but this is, this is blending. So as you can see, it, it's going to take, it'll take a wad that big to make my little blanket. And it, so you can see how, see there's, there's all kinds of little holes still in different spots. Those are the ones that I will fill before I take it off. I really wanted to, I wanted to get this one done because I want to show you how I take it off. Um, and it kind of bounces back and shrinks a little bit. So it loses some of that stretchiness. But uh, when I, when I take it off and, uh, but, but I have to get enough on there to get it off. 
it, you can't take it off until you get enough that it's going to make that little blanket. Otherwise, I'd have it so many pieces that it wouldn't work. And I have, I have a handy little tool, a very large crochet hook to get down in the little grooves. And sometimes I have to use a little bamboo chopstick. And uh, so I use the tools I have. Like I said, I don't have a fancy blender and it would make it so much quicker if I did. Uh, but the little animals, I, I really have to make the animals on request because they sell so fast that I can't keep them. I make little ornaments. Um, I love to make the little mice and I make sheep. And uh, I have made some alpacas in the ornaments. I've made snowmen. Uh, I've made puppies. And in the, the little animals I've made, let's see, besides mice, I've made fox and kittens. So I've, I've made a few. Uh, I've made some little lambs. And usually those are special requests. Uh, so, but if I just took this and, and just did this, you can see it. It just combs it really fine and you get this little just little soft and then I can I can still use it here I stretch it out when it starts filling up kind of tight then I take my my brush and I just kind of poke it down in the needles so that it's I want it to be at the very top, so almost flush. Yes, it is a lot of work, but it's kind of neat to see what you can make in the end. And when you see those soaps, for those who have not seen, seen those soaps that I do, um, you'll be really kind of amazed, I think at the process, but this is, this is the more fun stuff. Washing it wasn't quite as fun because it's washing it over and rinsing it and washing it and rinsing it and trying to get all the little mud and bits and hay and sometimes you get it stickers. Oh my goodness. This particular lamb lived where there was those little tiny stickers and they were all in the fiber and I don't see one, but sometimes I still find one that I missed while I was washing. But that's okay because every process, a little more sand or, or you, you know, you see a, you see one of those little stickers. So it, you don't just quit processing. Once you go to the next phase, you continue doing what you was doing before if you missed any. So you can see how it's filling up now. And like I said, I wanted to show you, at least show you what it looks like coming off of here. But the very next phase after this is those little blankets I showed you. So you think how in the world are we gonna get one piece? But it is kind of amazing that we do. So I just poke that down in there. So it makes it a little bit tight. Let me see if it's, it's enough to get out. So my little tail here, I have a little tail that's hanging off and I just start pulling it up off the needle. And I just roll it. And these are really called roll eggs that now is that not cool <laughs> so we have like a little blanket and then I can put one of my little soaps in there I always turn it that way and fold it over and I do my little ceiling and that's how we do our we put a little jacket on those soaps 
So that is my felted soaps. And I have enough here to do probably five more of those, maybe more. But that's, I don't have a finished soap yet, but we're gonna finish it on the other video. So that is how we process sheep's fiber. And it's just another art form that we think it's art now, but to them, it was survival. They, they processed it up to make yarn, to make clothing, to make sweaters. Um, yeah, they probably didn't felt the soaps or the dryer balls, of course, because they didn't have that kind of stuff back then. But their basic was, you know, let's, let's make something warm, a beanie for our head, our scarf. Now, if this is what you consider the blanket, which is the, the, the saddle part of the, the sheep. Now, there's wasteful parts that usually are just too felted. It's already wet and felted and it's got too much dirt in it. Back in the old days, they used that. They took all of the scraps and they used it in, um, in the walls for insulation. So there was uses, they didn't waste anything either. So they would take all of that and stuff it in the walls, cover the walls. It helped to make their huts warmer, their homes warmer. So if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and I will bring you the second part of it where we actually felt the soaps and the dryer balls. So give us, give us a subscribe if you haven't, comment, share and I'll bring you more. See you. Bye.